Hi, I'm Philo and welcome to the show. Today, I'm going to be delving into the highly controversial topic, is the shaft too overpowered and diabolical? Following the first diabolical stress test, I've been really closely monitoring all the conversation online and I've seen people complaining that the shaft is overpowered, either because, you know, they're a player coming in and they're finding it overpowered, or because people who, you know, kind of have a bit more experience with the game are worried that new players coming in are going to find it overpowered. Or some people are just experienced with Arena FPS and they, yeah, they felt dominated by the shaft in a lot of situations. And there's a lot of really complex things to break down here, a lot of kind of cases and considerations. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the history of the gun, why I think it's so important in core game modes, and why I think it doesn't really matter if it's dominant in Arena. Alright, so cast your mind back to 1996. Quake 1 comes out and it has the lightning gun, the, the predecessor to the shaft, and the Quake 1 lightning gun does 300 damage per second. Okay, I'm going to compare these guns in terms of damage per second. It's not a great metric, but it gives you an idea. Um, 300 damage per second, though, is a lot. It's a stupid amount. Um, but it's okay, because the year is 1996, no one has internet that isn't horrible dial-up, and uh, everyone's playing with crappy bull mice, so no one can hit the lightning gun, right? The damage doesn't matter. Uh, 1999, Quake 3 comes out. Uh, Quake 2 skipped the lightning gun, it's fine, don't worry about that. Quake 3 lightning gun does something like 160, maybe 180 damage per second. It's a big reduction. Uh, and people still have horrible bull mice, people still don't hit that well. But then you fast forward to 2008, and players like Cypher and Avec are just completely dominating with their amazing hit scan. So, Quake Live comes out, and it lowers the lightning gun damage, it lowers the railgun damage. The lightning gun now does about 140 damage per second, I think, and at the very end of Quake Live, it gets lowered again to 120, largely in response to one player, Evil, dominating the online scene. So, the history of the lightning gun is that it's gotten weaker and weaker, and people are calling for it to be nerfed in uh, Diabotical again. I would equate the shaft in Diabotical in terms of power roughly to what's in Quake Live now, maybe a bit stronger. Um, so you know, why not nerf it again, right? It's been nerfed so many times in history. And I really feel like we're approaching the floor for how much you can reduce the damage of the lightning gun without uh, removing it from kind of like it, its critical role in the three main guns. See, when people talk about Quake, and I think this is pretty common these days, people talk about it in terms of the rocket, the lightning gun, and the rail. Uh, each is the main gun that dominates close, medium, and long range respectively. This means that there's a really clear hierarchy of weapons, right? Tier 1 guns, and then everything else, where you have the starting machine gun, the plasma gun, the shotgun, weapons that are really effective in very specific situations, but that you have to be really creative with to get the same kind of utility as you do out of the tier 1 weapons. And having this hierarchy is really important because it plays into this idea of resource management and especially resource denial, right? If you're playing one-on-ones, if you're playing hardcore TDM, you're going to be thinking about what weapons your opponents have and how you can deny them, right? So, for example, I recently posted a video with a duel on Skybreak, and in that game you can see me get frags and kind of be thinking, how can I deny my opponent the rail, or at least make them pay for it, or how can I deny my opponent the shaft? And especially on Skybreak, the shaft is in a great spot where after a frag you can rush there and try and deny your opponent. So resource management and resource denial, right? One of the common things I saw on Reddit is people saying, well, make the plasma gun better, make the shotgun better. But if these guns are better, then it's not going to matter if you have a lightning gun or not as much, right? If I'm rushing into a situation and I'm like, oh, I've only got 50 OG ammo, I need to be careful about taking mid-range fights. If I can just say, oh, hold on, but I've got a plasma gun as well. Well, that's not as interesting, is it, right? The more the weapons overlap the less interesting situations there are, and the less creative you have to be to really utilize them, right? One of the great things to watch in Quake Live Duel is when a really experienced player can do something clever with just a grenade launcher, or just a plasma gun, or just a shotgun. Like, they know, they've done the sums in their head, they know how to move, they know the geometry of the map they can abuse in a certain way to get an advantage from a massive disadvantage. For me, that's really what Quake's about, and so it would be sad to see the clear hierarchy of guns broken down by reducing the damage of the lightning gun even more. The other important thing is that, well, the tier 1 guns all serve a really important role other than just dominating close, medium, and long range, right? The rockets are the king of owning fights where you have a vertical advantage, right? Where you have the high ground. Are the rail is the king of unreturned damage. You can deal damage and disappear and your opponent will, you know, barely know what hit them, right? And it's a great way to equalize or reduce an advantage when you're in especially a one-on-one -on -one situation. The lightning gun, or the shaft, that's the gun about punishing bad movement and punishing bad attacks, right? If someone is jumping through the air at a dumb time, the lightning gun is going to shut them down. If someone is rushing head force first towards you, or otherwise moving in a straight line, the lightning gun never is easier to hit. 
And I think part of the reason people complain so much about the lightning gun is, well, frankly, they're probably moving in dumb ways and opening them, opening themselves up to being farmed. Personally, when I'm playing weak players, I see it all the time. They don't understand the details of quick combat. They don't know how to optimize their movement. They don't know how to fight without taking damage in return. And usually it's the lightning gun that cleans up players like this, right? Or players who think that you get into a game of Quake and you just jump around and try and shoot things. These players are the easiest to hit with LG. And these are the games where I finished with the highest LG percent, right? Consistently. Um, Because the lightning gun punishes players who don't know how to move. But not everyone complaining about the gun is a new player, right? Some of them genuinely feel like, you know, they were using it to dominate other people. And I think part of this as well, right, for some of the people coming in from other first-person shooters uh, is the fact that, well, maybe they just don't have a lot of experience with rockets, you know? Or maybe their rockets weren't quite up to scratch. I've definitely seen players whose LG is far superior to their rockets to the point where, yeah, you're better off using lightning gun or shaft at close range versus rockets, right? You're just not going to hit the rockets. Um, I had literally the opposite experience. I found rockets were extremely good in close range, and I had loads of situations where even against some pretty good players, I was cleaning them up at close range with rockets versus LG, just because, well, my rockets tend to be pretty good. Okay, the last thing I really want to address as well are people who are saying that, well, they only played Arena, and the LG was the only gun that was really useful, and to that I say, yeah, there are some maps in Arena where you spawn with all health and all armor and all weapons that the LG is just dominant, right? You're only gonna see lightning gun, rockets, and rail in this mode, because they're just the best guns. Um, And you can't balance your game around the mode where you have all weapons and health and armor every time you spawn. I just don't think that's what you should be balancing your game around when there are interesting modes, like... Uh, like MacGuffin, like TDM, like Duel, even Free For All, right? It, this hierarchy works really well for these modes, and Arena, it's kind of just a dick measuring contest, right? It's where you go to frag it out and develop your mechanics, especially with the three main guns, so that you can then apply that to other modes. It shouldn't be your final destination of number one ranked Arena player in the world, and you're only ever going to play Arena. I, if you're playing like that, great that you just have to accept that these guns are going to be dominant. But why is the lightning gun so dominant in clan arena and arena and, you know, modes like this in Quake, right? Why is it so dominant? Uh, And partly it's to do with the maps that are played, right? The maps tend to be smaller. They tend to be lots of medium range fights. And if you take the largest arena map in Diabotical, Barrow, it just devolves into campy rocket fests unless the players want to actually take these mid range or close range fights, right? Um... And personally, I find that really, really dull. I don't like playing Railgun Peak. I would rather my arena games were fast and furious uh, and just, like, get through more of them and get better practice from that, I, I find at least, right? Less, less downtime, less time just hunting where your opponent is and trying not to take a little corner rail as you, like, poke your head out. Um, the other thing as well is when you're in a mode where you spawn with all health and all armor and you're up close... So, you know, a common thing in Arena is you fire a rocket and it bounces your opponent up. And then if you miss the midair, you may as well have been using LG because, you know, uh, they're just in the air and you're not damaging them with rockets, right? Um, Or, you know, the nightmare situation is you bounce your opponent up and miss the midair and they've got LG out and they're hitting you the whole time. So in in a mode where you always have max stack at the start of a fight, then, yeah, I think it does reduce some of the effectiveness at rockets at, at close range. Uh... And again, I think it's part of the reason that you shouldn't be thinking about the overall game balance in terms of arena. Okay, so what what's my advice here? Get good, get better rockets, like move better uh, so you're not as easily farmable with LG and don't play arena? Well, no. I think arena's lots of fun and if you enjoy playing it, please continue playing it, uh, especially in Australia because I love having people to queue into. But don't balance your entire game around arena and don't think the entire game should be balanced around you if you only like arena. The other modes are still there, right? I I don't want to say... Okay, I'm going to say it. The other modes are a lot more interesting. Fight me. But you can't live in your own little arena bubble and think that's the be-all and end-all and the shaft should be balanced around you. And if you're a newer player, you should be looking for ways to move more effectively. And if you're getting dominated by shaft in situations, then think about those situations. Think about how you moved. And one of my favorite things in Quake, and I say this so often, okay, if something happens to you, if you get dominated by Shaft and you think, man, that was annoying, think about how you can do that to other players, right? What did that player do that let them dominate you with the Shaft? How can you flip that around? Uh, Because that's a really great mindset for improving, and that's something that's helped me improve a lot over the years. Um, Practice your rockets so that they're good in close range. You just have to practice them, and Arena's a great mode to do that. 
Um, like I said, I love having people in Australia to queue Arena into. And look, if you're worried about new players coming in getting dominated by Shaft, they probably are going to get dominated by Shaft. And we just have to hope that Diabolical has a community so that new players aren't getting matched against veterans, right? That's all we can say, I think. Um, and all just hope that people coming in have an open mind and are prepared to challenge themselves and try and learn. I think across the board, there's a mindset that Quake is something casual and something fun and something easy. Or people think because they're good in another FPS, they're going to come in and be good at it. And it hurts their ego when they get destroyed. Uh, and I think overall there's this kind of mindset problem we need to somehow train people to get out of with Quake. I'm hoping the videos on this channel can do exactly that. So if you want to see more high quality diabolical discussion, please uh, like and whatever, share this video around. Honestly, sending it to your friends and posting it on any uh, discords you might think might be interested is the best thing you can do. Uh, please help me promote this. I've also linked a few other Quake content creators and Diabolical content creators in the description. Check them out because there are some people making some really great videos that are criminally underviewed. So thank you so much for tuning in. I've been Phylum. I'm definitely going to be back soon, especially after the second stress test. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.